Hello, in this video I'm gonna show you and explain all of the advanced server settings for vRising. So in order to access them we'll need to open the play button, then go for the private game right here. And from this list click on advanced game settings. And right here you'll be able to change any of these uh, settings, there's a lot of them and I'm just gonna go through all of them and explain what they do. So the first one says for itself, it will allow global chat, so if you disable it, uh, uh, then the global chat for uh, this uh, server will be disabled and uh, people won't be able to um, leave messages and uh, just chat with each other on the global chat. Next thing is server time zone and you can uh, simply change it uh, for uh, the time purposes, so just select whichever time you want. You can also set it to local system time and that way it will set it automatic. Next thing is player and castle interactions and permission to loot dead players. So if for example uh, you're the owner of the server but you play and you kill someone, you can select if you want to loot, loot him, only clan members can loot him or only he will loot him, be, only he will be able to loot him. So you can just change it to whichever option you want. Next option is world settings and it has soul shards amount and you can change it from unique to plentiful. And uh, these are end game items and if you set it to unique there will be a limited amount of them and only uh, one of uh, each will be available at a single time and that, that's fun setting for a PvP because uh, it will uh, encourage uh, people to fight each other for these uh, soul shards. So you can set it to plentiful if you want uh, just a lot of them or unique to have only one of each. Next is garlic strength multiplier and you can set it to whichever percentage you want and that's basically uh, that's kind of mid game I would say setting because if you eat uh, like drink a blood from a garlic infested place uh, you'll get the garlic, garlic infection and here you can change the strength or multiplier for it. Next up is silver strength and you can uh, you can uh, change its uh, multiplier so silver if you take any silver coin for example they they are uh, useful for trading with uh, traders in game but if you carry them they deal damage to you so if you can change the multiplier on how much damage they will actually be dealing to the player that carries them that's uh, that might be fun for PvP as well. Next option is Sun Strength Multiplier and here you can change how much uh, damage does the Sun deal. So if you set it to maximum the Sun will almost instantly kill everybody and you can also just change it to zero if you want. Next option is Items and here you can change Bloodbound Equipment and uh, here's the you can also like look on the information next to it in order to see each setting specifically. So blood equipment is when enabled, most equipment will not be dropped upon dead. Um, so if you have a vampire and he's equipped with lots of stuff, if you enable this uh, one, the, he shouldn't drop uh, his, uh, for example, armor if he dies. Here's the teleport bound items and when enabled some items will prevent you from using way gates and that way uh, if you enable it you won't be able to teleport with uh, any resources items uh, through multiple waypoints that's also kind of fun for pvp you can then disable that for pve because uh, i mean it's it adds some difficulty but uh, it also just extends the time between you because you need to walk from one place to another instead of teleporting when you want to just transfer a few ingots. Next option is inventory stacks multiplayer and here you can change it on how much uh, for example leather you can carry in one stack so you can just change multiplier for that for whatever you want. Next is loot multiplier and multiplies the amount of loot dropped from enemies, barrel boxes and chests so that means if you increase it, there will be more loot from uh, all the boxes, 
enemies and uh, chests that says for itself. Servant hunt multiplayer and that changes the amount of loot received from successful servant hunts. So when you get to the servants and you send them on a mission on your blood throne, you'll be able to get more resources by increasing this option. Next one is materi material yield multiplier and that changes on how much ore or materi materials you get from uh, world items when you mine them. Blood essence multiplier and that changes the amount of blood essence received from defeating enemies. So this actually changes how much uh, blood you basically drink when you kill an enemy and uh, that if you increase it uh, you will have lots of a uh, lot more uh, blood and uh, it will last for a long time. Next up is a castle options and here we have the K rate multiplier and that changes when you have a castle heart and you don't place any blood essence since your castle will start decaying and you can change the multiplier on how strong this decaying process is. Next up we have blood essence drain rate and that changes uh, the consumption of uh, castle uh, blood essence so you can change that to whatever you want as well. Here's the uh, castle heart limitation and uh, you can change on how many castle hearts uh, you can build at the same time from 1 to 5 and that changes on uh, how much castle basically castles you can build because the castle hearts are like a hub of a castle you build it and from there you can increase the size or place any buildings in it. Next option is minimum distance between castles and uh, I would actually recommend using the one option. I prefer that. You can of course change it but uh, that means you can place a castle near a castle and just make it look cooler. Uh, I don't like the default two option. It's pretty annoying. So, but you can, if you're playing on any PvP server and don't want people to build near other castles, you can set it to 10 or what also. Here you can change the territory tier list for each castle heart level uh, and increase the size on how much tiles you can build on for the each castle level. So you can just set it to whatever you want, like this. Uh, I'm not gonna go through all of them because there's no point actually. Just uh, it's the same setting for each, just uh, just for a different level. Here's the same thing but for servant uh, limits, so that means uh, on how much uh, servant coffins you'll be able to place in uh, one castle on each level, so you can change that also. Here's the vermin nest limitation and that's uh, the rat uh, place, where, where, like the rat building which spawns rat and you can change the amount of buildings you can get in one castle. Tomb limitation is uh, the same as vermin but here the skeletons and zombies will spawn. Uh, in order to farm bones and uh, stuff like that, so you can change that to whichever percentage you want. Uh, lockbox limitation is a lockbox uh, that uh, you can uh, place in your castle and this, with this lockbox lock nobody will be able to loot it. And you can change it to whichever percentage you want, so, I mean uh, amount you want. So if you set 4, you can get 4 chests that nobody will be able to loot when they break into your castle. Next we have uh, crafting and here you can change build cost multiplier so you can change on how much uh, the, each building will cost um, via this multiplier so you can even set it to free and that way you'll be able to build without any resources. Crafting cost multiplier changes on uh, how much uh, crafting material, materials you will need for, cra for specific items so if you increase it to 10 the resources for uh, for one, for example, sword will be in a very large amounts. Crafting rate means uh, the speed uh, of uh, how long the items will be crafted. Because in this game, if you, for example, want to craft a sword, it takes for like one minute to craft them. So you can change the multiplier on how long the, these things will be crafted. Refinement uh, cost is uh, basically if you smelt iron ore into iron ingots, uh, you'll be able to change the multiplayer on how much ore is needed for uh, the specific ingot. 
Next, next one is a refinement rate and that changes the time on how much it takes to uh, craft the, to smelt one, uh, for example, one uh, iron ingot. Server, servants convert rate, it, it basically tells you if you place one servant in a coffin, uh, how long he, it will take for him to convert to your uh, troll. Next option is dismantle resources multiplier and uh, if you like dismantle your castle, for example you don't like the wall design or something and you want to dismantle it, it changes on how much uh, it will uh, give you how much resources it will give you back when uh, you change this multiplayer. If you set it to 1, you will get exact same number of resources that you used to build it and uh, in default at 75. Okay. Next option is time settings and here you can change on how long the day uh, will last. So first one, this might be quite confusing. And first one is day length and here you can change uh, in seconds how long the day will last. So for example, you can set it to short and that way entire uh, day, which is uh, daylight and uh, night, uh, will take. Uh, so, the, for example, here's the short version and uh, then the day will take 600 seconds and the night will take 600 seconds and that means the full cycle takes 112 seconds. That's how the setting works. Next option is daytime limit and you can change it to a specific time between sunrise and sunset to rel relative to uh, the full day night cycle duration. So you can change uh, it for example to Swedish winter and that means the day will be shorter than night and here's the, you can change it to Swedish summer and then uh, the days will be longer but nights will be shorter. Here's vampire settings and you can change the health multiplier for your vampires and that will increase or decrease the health for uh, uh, vampires for the players. Physical power multiplier and that changes the uh, value of damage players deal using weapon attacks and weapon skills for vampires for the, because vampires always play we can uh, ex establish that. The spell, spell power works the same way, you just change the spell power for the vampires. You can change resources uh, power multiplier and, and this changes uh, the amount of damage players deal to resources objects. So you can change it to high like 5 and that way you almost instantly break the iron ore for example. Damage received multiplier changes on how much damage you receive uh, from uh, any damage. So for example, it works for players along with uh, enemies, NPCs or monsters. Blood drain rate changes uh, the how quickly players lose blood. A higher rate results in a higher blood consumption. Next up we have equipment and here we can change durability of our equipment because in this game uh, our equipment breaks and it takes uh, some time to actually break it in one so you can increase it or decrease it if you want. You can change the health multiplier of uh, equipment and that way you will increase the health amount of uh, this equipment. You can change resource yield multiplier and that way uh, the resources will have more, much more or much less. Uh, stuff in it. Physical power multiplier changes on how uh, uh, the... it changes players physical power. This value affects the amount of damage players deal using weapon attacks and skills. So that basically uh, it's... I was confused because uh, we have here all, or, uh, already but this one I think it works for items only. So if you don't want like players to deal a lot of damage but weapons do, you can change it for uh, specific weapons. And here's the rings uh, that uh, improve your spell power. Standard units, uh, health multipliers and here you can change the amount of uh, the health and the damage for uh, any AI unit. V blood units uh, and uh, this one I'm kinda confused actually uh, 
I'm gonna go back to it in uh, another video because I need to experiment on that. So let's just leave these for now and move to the boss specific. You can enable it right here and that way you'll be able to change the level or uh, power of each uh, boss in the game. So that's very nice if you want to increase the difficulty for the game and it shows you very much. Next option is progression and you can change the starting equipment for the players so we can set none that way uh, you'll just have the basic start you'll start with your fists only you can get gear level with copper and that way you'll start with a copper you'll start with the next one is iron and then dark silver and last one is a sanguine you also can change the starting resources which you're gonna start with so this one is level 30 supplies level 50 supplies and uh, level 70 supply, uh, supplies you can enable unlock journals in order to unlock uh, or automatically unlock any of these journals. Next option is unlocked research and that way you'll be automatically unlocking uh, all the research for a specific tier list. So you can just select any and for example this one will unlock all, all of the upgraded copper weapons and armor and stuff like that. So after setting everything here you can click on save new rule set, enter the name for the rule set, and the description, uh, test for example, press save, then save again, go back, and now for example let's uh, just move out of these options, go for the play again, private game, and here select loot rule set and we'll be able to find the settings that we've just changed. And that's it for this video, hope you like it, please consider subscribing to our channel, leave a like and a comment below.